Hey, friend, Chris Vandiver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. This week is going to be 10.5 week here on Why Logic Pro Rules. Each day, starting today through Friday, I'm going to be posting a brief walkthrough of the big blockbuster new features that have arrived with the new 10.5 update. These videos are going to be focused on the most important bits that are gonna help you quickly and efficiently get started with these new features. Today, we're going to dig into live loops, which is single-handedly the biggest innovation to Logic Pro 10, possibly since the release of Logic Pro 10. And I know for a fact that many a Logic user have been clamoring for this style of production, a non-linear style of producing and composing. And I also know that there are some Logic users who are a little weirded out, maybe a little intimidated by this whole new live loops grid look. And that's why we're gonna dig through this. I think the biggest hurdles to getting started with live loops really just boils down to language or vocabulary and also playback, because playback is very different as compared to the tracks area. I mean, let's just open the tracks area and close down the grid. And this is how we've always known Logic to be, a left to right sequential style of composing and writing along a timeline with a ruler lining bars and beats along the top of the tracks area. And so we record audio, we record MIDI, we put in drummer regions, and we build a composition or a song from left to right. Now, the grids area is very much different. Even though we have all these cells, none of these cells are required to play alongside any of the other cells. We could play a cell from this stack, that one, that one, that one, and they'll all play together. The one thing that does tie these cells together is the quantize start, which tells Logic when a cell should begin playing when you set it up to be queued. And the quantize start can be set on a global basis per scene, per cell. And we can start anywhere from one bar. So should the cell that you queued up play on the next bar? Should it play on the next two bars, six or eight? And there's a variety of other options. Quickly, let's just identify what we're working with in the grid here. So live loops is obviously made up of a grid. And each of these colored blocks are known as cells. Each stack of cells from top to bottom is known as a scene. And we can play scenes all together just by clicking on the arrow beneath a scene. So quickly, let's just play a cell. I'll just play any cell. I think we have a guitar one here. Okay. And then we can also play several cells. So let me make sure everything's not queued. And I'll just select a number of cells. Let's hit play. And we can also play an entire scene. So let's play the scene. Now you can see that I keep going to the stop button in the right hand corner, and this is known as the grid stop. The big deal here is that the playback in the live loops grid section is based on cells being queued or not queued. You can see that the stack here is glowing at us while everything else is not glowing. And yes, we have these cells selected, but the glowing cells say that these cells are queued for playback. So if we hit spacebar for playback, these glowing cells are what are going to play back. Here we go. To remove cells from the queue, the safest and easiest way is to just click over here on the stop button. Okay, now nothing is queued. Another detail let's examine is let's hone in on this cell right here. And we're gonna turn the loop off for the cell so it's no longer looped. We do have this option of switching a cell from looped to not looped. Let's now hit play on the cell and then I'm going to stop the cell. Now take a look. The transport here is still going. If we open the tracks area, the playhead is still going. So even though I stopped the cell, I did not stop playback. So now if I introduce, let's say an entire scene alongside this, so let's hit return here. We didn't stop the transport until I hit the space bar. This is a huge thing to keep in mind. So I've started committing to myself here. Return cues any selected cells for playback while the space bar stops and begins playback. Spacebar doesn't cue the cells, it just starts playing again what has already been queued. Return will actually cue those cells. We also can move scenes around just by hovering our mouse over the number of each scene. We can drag across, 
drag this back and they switch numbers. And if we squash this up, I've noticed that you can't drag an empty scene anywhere. You gotta actually populate it with a cell before you have the ability to drag it around. Good to know. We also have this brand new cell inspector and the cell inspector allows us a variety of options for adjusting loop length, the cell length, being able to loop as you saw, mute, being able to reverse a loop. Keep this all in mind, but I'm gonna show you some easier ways to adjust a loop to be able to adjust the start and end of a cell. We can also replace cells. So if I drag this cell into the one next to it, we've replaced it. But if I also click and hold and then hold control, I can swap cells with each other. So now they've been swapped in order. That's super helpful. So I could take this one and drag it across and boom, now we've swapped them. Let's now dig into how to populate the grid. It's very easy, most of it is drag and drop. So let's open the tracks area and you can see me take this particular loop and drag it into the tracks area. So now we have a region in the tracks area for this loop and let's make sure to get it out of the way of the loop section here. Now let's take the same exact region and drag it onto an empty cell. It's that easy to drag from the tracks area into the cells. If we open an apple loop, we can drag an apple loop into the cell area. Boom, we now have a track lane with that loop. We can also drag audio files from the finder into the grid. So now we've loaded an entire audio file as a cell. And if we open the editor, you can see, let's close up the Apple loop library. And I put this into focus. You can see this is a pretty humongous audio file. And we wouldn't use most of this, or we may want to break it up into separate bars. And I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. So let's mute this track lane for now. The big thing to keep in mind that ties the grid to the tracks area Number one is the transport. So the grid needs the transport to be playing to playback cells. And you'll see in all the starter grids that come in the template section of 10.5 that bars one through eight have a cycle range with no regions living in that section on the tracks area. So this leaves eight bars on cycle for looping and queuing cells. If you're working with regions in both the track area and the cell area, I recommend keeping that eight bar loop free of any regions on the track side. Cause you know, you just don't wanna be listening to your cells and then have some random track playing in the background. So let's actually switch here. And I'm gonna load this scene and just check it out. That actually kind of worked out for us, but you get what I'm saying. You don't want these playing back while you're test driving different cells. Now the cells can be made up of any style of region, whether it's audio, MIDI, sampler, drummer, and you can even edit each of these cells as well using the editor. So we've selected this cell here and we have a piano roll that we can adjust. If I select one of the guitar tracks here, open the editor, we have an audio file that we can edit and adjust. So let's now try to record a riff right into the grid here. So I'm going to use the first scene here and I'm going to load up an instance of Alchemy. And I'm gonna look for an 80s pad. So the 80s air pad here, I'm gonna set it to the fast trim, open the musical typing. Cool. So we wanna make sure that these guys are queued for playback. You can use option return to queue them up. So now they're glowing. And I'm gonna turn on my count in, my metronome. So now I'm going to go down to the cell that I wanna record in. I'm gonna start recording. Here we go. I hit spacebar to stop playback. Awesome, now we have our loop. And if I open the editor, I can quantize these if I deem it necessary. And boom, now we have a part that we can play along with the rest of the scene. That is so freaking cool. All right, so let's go back to this party trap beat that I brought in and we'll solo it for now and we'll close down the tracks area. And let's just open within the editor here and let me make sure everything is dequeued. Okay, so let's squash this up. Now we can see that this is a huge, huge amount of audio and we need loops. You know, we need something that starts right on the beat, ends right on the beat. So there's a couple ways of going about this. First, you could right click on the cell itself. 
and we can go right down to extract loops and we can either choose set optimal full loop. So this will clean up the dead space at the beginning and end of this region. We can extract the best two bar loops, extract the best four bar loops, eight or just best loops of any size. So let's pick four bar loops. Now Logic is analyzing the audio and now it's given us a whole series of four bar loops. Now the original region here or cell is still intact, but we now have these separate loops. And look at that, it syncs right up to our project tempo and it's just ready to go. So let's just play this loop and we'll play the whole scene in fact. Let's take this out of solo and maybe I'll pick these guys here. Check it out. That's amazing. But perhaps you have a loop that you're already pretty satisfied with. You just want to tighten up the beginning and the end in the loop section. So let's open the editor again, squash this up. We have this highlighted bar right above the region in this view. And this operates as a cycle range or loop range. So let me just take the left corner, drag it across to bar three. And you can see now we're starting at bar three. And if I squash this up by quite a bit, take the other end, drag it way down and go to maybe bar seven. Let's go back to the cell view. You can see now we have a simple loop. So let's DQ everything and play this back. Very cool. Let's open the editor again. You can also set the loop separate from the start of the cell. I've moved this cycle range to bars five to the tail end of six. I've set the start of the cell at bar three. So it's going to begin playing back from three, but then start looping five and six. So let's zoom in here and let's hit play. That is freaking awesome. So you can very easily tailor your loops as you need them. And it just syncs right to the project. But just in case it doesn't sync to the project as it should, as you would expect it to, in terms of tempo or transient, you can actually go to edit, edit smart tempo right within the editor, which will open smart tempo. Or the other option is you can go to edit, go to edit transients. And we have the transient view enabled here. And you can go through and, you know, tighten up transients, remove them, add them if you need to within the audio file editor. And this will help Logic identify how to better associate a loop with the grid, with the tempo of your project. We now should probably capture a performance. This allows us to be able to basically record the different scenes and the different loops into the tracks area. So let's say that you've been playing around with different scenes and different cells and, you know, you feel like you got something good going on. And now you want to commit it to an actual like left to right linear composition. Well, that's very easy. Let's just remove this party trap loop, this air pad section here. Just get rid of these for now. Let's open the tracks area. And I'm going to start from bar 13 here. And I'm going to make sure that my loop section is in focus. We want to turn on this record button here. And now we can start locking and loading these different scenes or cells for playback. So I'm going to do option return. Now everything is ready to be queued. Make sure that my count in and my click is enabled. And then we can hit record and start recording into the main tracks area. So let's just see what happens here. You also want to keep in mind the quantize start and keep your eye on the playhead as it's nearing each bar. If one bar seems to be a little too short for you to be ready to activate different cells, then you can switch the quantize start. Well, let's see what happens here.
So I think you get the idea. It's pretty freaking sick and you can turn cells off and turn them on as you're recording. And now we have this whole section that's a loop and we've recorded right into the main tracks area here. You can see we have MIDI information, we have audio, it is so slick. Now it looks like all our regions are muted. And this is a very, very important thing to keep in mind because right now the focus of playback is going to be the cell area and not the tracks area. We have this divider between the two that divides both sides of the fence and we can swap the view to either or. So we're looking at the live loops view or we're looking at the main tracks view. So let's hit playback here. You can also stop or swap different track lanes from either side. So if I hit playback here and then I can swap over here. But if you're looking for a more immediate way of swapping from left to right, if you hold option, you can swap immediately during playback. So check it out. Let's uh, cue this scene up here. Here we go. And at the next bar, it'll swap over its playback. I think the introduction of Live Loops to Logic is an inspiring and amazing one that seems to be built on vibe, how things glue together, how they're kind of rubbing and pushing and pulling against each other and could lead to new ideas for your songs that you maybe wouldn't have come to naturally. So I highly suggest giving Live Loops a try. I hope this was helpful for you. As always, if it was, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and new posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.